Magical Delusion is one of the weirdest but greatest anime I have ever watched. It's insane just how this anime has managed to suck me in even though I have no idea what the fuck is going on in any given episode. Like sure, it isn't objectively one of the greatest anime and I can obviously see how somebody would hate this anime, but for me, this show had everything I was looking for. There are some shows that can make absolutely no sense but still have a message that they want to tell and this series is definitely one of those series. Magical Delusion is a series that I had no expectations for going into it but it ended up being a very welcome surprise for me. This anime is stupid for all the right reasons. It has a superficial plot that makes no sense, characters who for the most part are terrible people, and yet despite all of that, I love this anime, and I want to tell you all why, starting with some of its themes. Passion. We all experience that at some point in our lives. Whether it be a sport that we love, a video game, a show, a movie, hell, it could be anything. This anime explores the possibility of having your passions regulated and you not being allowed to openly love the things that you love. This would suck, obviously, as people should be allowed to like whatever the hell they want to without having anyone tell them what they can and can't like. But of course, that can't always be the case. Someone in society has to be the punching bag and in this universe it is the otaku. But they are fighting back for the things that they love as they won't let anyone stand in the way of them and their waifus, which is how things should be. There's a lot of mystery in this series as to what the fuck is going on. There's a lot of build up of things, some of it can be really subtle but for the most part it is right in your face, hidden but not. Usually, a lot of this series is told in jokes, and behind a lot of the comedy is where you get the regular plotline of the story being told. If you look past everything, this series has a complex plot that takes a lot of brain power to fully try to understand. Thankfully, for my stupid ass, there are a bunch of people in the comments of the episodes on Crunchyroll who can help me to understand this series through a whole bunch of theories. Which speaking of, there are a bunch that I want to talk about, starting with the one that I find to be the most interesting and one that I kind of agree with, which is that the MC is probably dead or in a coma. This theory spawned from how the OP and ED portray the characters and what they're going through. The visuals show them in a hospital bed in what looks like critical condition, and the magical girls aren't much better being knocked out on a beach with a bunch of injuries. Which, if you read into, it could be foreshadowing for a terrible ending or it could also be foreshadowing for the current state of the MC and the fact that this might be a dream world of some sort. There's also a theory about how the main antagonist is somehow related to the MC which makes a lot of sense if you look into the antagonist's motivations and what drives him alongside some of the stuff that we learned about the MC's past. I personally think he's his father if this theory ends up being true just because of how things have been set up for. There is also another theory which is a bit more lighthearted and I personally like which is that this series is about growing out of being an otaku and having to grow up and enter society. Which on the surface still isn't good but at least it's not like something where like the MC is dead or injured. I like this theory because I think it makes a lot of sense if you see all that has been set up for this theory to make sense. From how a lot of the characters talk about being an otaku, to how we see people interact with each other, and to even the backstories of people, it all ends up adding up in the end and makes for a really great theory that I think could definitely be true. This series has some really well written characters for what it is. A lot of the sidecasts are people who have either been oppressed in some way or are being used in some way to make the main antagonist's goal come to light. But what I really love about all of the characters are their personalities. Each one of their personalities make for some really great interactions between the characters, specifically in the comedy department. Even all of the side characters that only appear in one episode make for some really hilarious moments throughout the run of the show. The main four are really great in their own ways. Otaku Hiro, the main character, is a really solid leader and someone who believes in fighting for what you believe in, and never giving up. He is also someone who wants everyone to love the things that they love without fear of persecution or really any repercussions. He is also the guy who has had to deal with the three magical girls shit the most by oftentimes being the butt of the joke, but he is also someone who can play the straight man when the need arises. He is a great main character and makes the whole anime so much more fun to watch. The magical girls, Anarchy, Pink, and Blue are probably the best characters in the series in terms of personality and how funny they are. Anarchy is someone who, like Otaku Hiro, is someone who fights for what she believes in and never gives up the fight, even more so than Otaku Hiro as she oftentimes is the one having to lift everybody else up. She is also the face of the magical girls as the other two, although also being bold, are also more subdued and quiet, especially Pink who can't even speak. This makes her character really fun to be around as she has the brightest personality out of the three. Blue is by far the horniest out of the three of them which makes for some really hilarious moments, especially in combat as oftentimes she will remark about how wet she is or something stupid like that which really lightens the mood of what would otherwise be something really dark and depressing or more drama filled action. Which for most series wouldn't work, but this isn't most series. Blue is also quite smart, being able to translate what Pink is saying as well as coming up with decent plans for things as well. Pink is pretty funny. She is probably the most curious out of the three. She often gets herself into trouble by exploring or doing something stupid that she obviously shouldn't do. She's a specialist in a lot of poisons and other medications that help enhance her abilities. There are a lot of times where she uses these abilities and you're just like what the fuck because of how absurd it is but it also makes for some wonderful comedy. The main antagonist is really interesting. We don't know a lot about him but what we do know makes for a really interesting character. 
I personally think that he is an otaku who is ashamed of it and is trying to push his ideals onto other people to make it seem like being an otaku is a bad thing, but I don't know, it could really be anything. If you want amazing characters that are hilarious, then this series might just be for you. Besides just the story and characters, the technical aspect of the show is amazing. There are so many things that make this anime good, to start with, the animation. There are so many sequences in this anime where I'm like, what the hell, why is this so good? Especially for the action scenes, those are actually insanely good. But there are other scenes that are just as good, like the comedic moments are also really well animated. The art style of this series is also really good, especially the character designs. The designs are wacky and stupid, but they fit really well with the characters all being otaku. But the overall aesthetic of this series is just super cool. It is wacky, zany, and overall stupid, but it makes the insanity of this series work so well. The OST for this series is incredible, like it's unironically one of the best soundtracks of the season. It has this really cool vibe to it that just gets you really into the show and it sets the tone for what kind of show you are going to get yourself into, which is great. The OP and ED are also phenomenal. They both have hints to the true nature of the series which is awesome. Overall, I would say that the music is something that sets the series apart from any other anime coming out right now. This series is surprisingly really dark. Like, this series oftentimes makes no damn sense, but there are times when it gets really dark. There are a lot of backstories that give you a glimpse of what this series is really about. Not just the backstories though, a lot of the series has moments in it that just let you know what this series is trying to tell you. There are oftentimes things that happen in this series that seem normal, well at least normal for this series, but then they will set up something for the future of the series that implicates a very dark future. But that just makes this series far more interesting. Despite how dark this series is, it is also absolutely fucking hilarious. This series can be super unhinged with its comedy in the best way possible. It doesn't hold back at all and turns everything into a joke. There is nothing this series won't joke about whether it be death, sex, anime, manga, literally anything. Which makes this series feel refreshing from a lot of other comedy series out there that hold themselves back from being truly funny by not letting themselves joke about whatever. And this doesn't just apply to anime, it applies to all forms of comedy, but that's for another day. This series is just really funny and that's that. Magical Destroyers is an anime that really surprised me. I think this anime is definitely the biggest sleeper hit anime we have had in a while. Although I don't think it's the best anime, I do think it's pretty good and definitely should be watched, especially by those people who like anime like Fully Cooly, because this will be right up your alley if you do. Brand new system.